When Mick Schumacher scored his first F1 points in Silverstone 2022, the only feeling everyone had was finally. Mini Champs must have had the same feeling and it gave them an excuse to milk out their Mick Schumacher collection and produce yet another different version of the Haas VF22. As a big Michael Schumacher fan, I was obviously always going to buy this model car and here it is, the Mini Champs scale 118th resin model of Mick's Haas Ferrari VF22 from the 2022 British Grand Prix. Mick Schumacher was always going to come into F1 with a huge backpack on. Sure, his surname did help in the junior categories, but he always managed to achieve the needed result to move up the ladder. He won the European F3 Championship in 2018, and by the way, there's a nice model by Minichams of that car too, which I reviewed on the channel as well, link in the top corner here. So yeah, he won the European F3 in 2018 and also wrapped up the Formula 2 title in 2020. Remarkably, both times he did take the title in his second year, giving him the reputation of being a bit of a slow starter in new categories. So when Mick entered his second season in F1 in 2022, hopes were high. His debut season in 2021 was a rough one as his Haas team didn't develop the car at all during that year. This made his performances difficult to judge and his teammate that season was also not a good barometer either. When Haas finally severed their Soviet links at the beginning of 2022 and called back their old friend Kevin Magnussen, Mick finally would have a worthy adversary to be compared with. The new VF22 Haas also proved to be pretty competitive, so all ingredients were present to have a good second season as he usually would have. Schumacher however struggled in the beginning of the season, with his teammate Magnussen having a great start of the year. Two huge crashes for Mick in Saudi Arabia and Monaco made his position in the team uncertain. He did bounce back however with a great qualifying session in Canada, putting his car in Q3 for the first time in his career. In the race however, his Ferrari engine let him down, robbing him of a good chance of getting those first points. The upward turning form was already halted in qualifying for the next round at Silverstone though. In wet conditions, Mick only managed to qualify P19, just keeping Lance Stroll behind him. Come race day, however, things would change for the young German. The spectacular start crash of Joe Guan Yu and others involved of course helped him out a bit, but he did keep his nose clean in the ensuing chaos. After that, he steadily kept going, moving up into the points by lap 19. By the end of the race, he was battling Max Verstappen even for 7th position. In the end, he finished 8th, finally getting that nil point out of the way. In the next weekend in Austria, he again impressed, racing Lewis Hamilton hard for the last point in the sprint race. On Sunday, he even managed to move further up the ranks, finishing an excellent 6th, two places ahead of his more experienced teammate Magnussen. After the mid-season high, his performances tailed off a bit, this mainly due to the car becoming increasingly less competitive. Rumors then also started to swell that he would lose his place in the Ferrari Driver Academy, of which he had been a part of since 2019. This spelled the end of his Haas F1 stint as well, and Mick was forced to find refuge elsewhere. Mercedes boss Toto Wolf quickly snapped up the German, making him a test and reserve driver for the team for the 2023 season. Later that year, Mick was rumored to join the Alpine brand new LDMH assault for the 2024 WEC Championship and 24 Hours of Le Mans, this has now also been confirmed. Simultaneously, he will also stay in his role as Mercedes's test and reserve driver. Minichamps are the only ones to make 118th models of the Haas F1 cars. This is mainly due to them holding the Schumacher license. They only started making these models in 118th when Mick joined the team for the 2020 Young Driver Test in Abu Dhabi. Of the Haas VF22 car, they made the Bahrain Grand Prix versions of both Schumacher and Magnussen. These were limited to 600 and 480 pieces respectively. There are also the CK model car special versions available, limited to 555 pieces each. The only difference here is just the style of packaging, with the CK versions having a custom made box. Also note that the Schumacher models have a different box art as well. After that, it was just a matter of time Minichamps would also make a MIG First Points version too, as they usually milk out the Schumacher collections and try to make full use of the molds they have already produced. So in that regard, a Magnussen version of this British Grand Prix car has also been made. 
Both models are again limited editions. The Shumi version is limited to 360 pieces and the Magnussen only to 204. Minichamps will then also produce the Brazilian Grand Prix version then, the venue of Kevin Magnussen's surprise first pole, which was also the first one for the team. I believe a Schumacher version from that Grand Prix weekend is also on the cards. I'm pretty certain these will also be limited editions. So let's first have a quick look at the packaging. This style of box here is unique for the uh, Schumacher collection. It's basically the same box as the Magnussen regular release version, but with a different box art. As you can see, it's red all over with some faint white streaks on it. On the sides there are Mick Schumacher logos, very similar to the one his dad used. His signature underneath then also looks very similar to his dad's and has changed from the one he used to use at the beginning of his career. The House of One team logo is also featured and the model info in the lower corner here and then the edition number from the Mick Schumacher collection. The other side then is exactly the same and on the top too it features the same uh, logos and Minchamps logo as well. One side flap then is the same as the size of the box and the other one has a picture of Mick's Haas F1 car from uh, the race it is based on. Inside then the model is set in the uh, same style of styrofoam clamshell all Minichamps F1 resin models are packed in. The base then has been changed a bit though. It's now a bit less dark grey and has a finish line printed on it. The chrome plaque with the model info engraved in it is still the same as it was before. For the cons on this model I can be rather brief. In general I think it's quite a good model car but just lacks the finer detail you would expect from a mini chance model, especially a resin one. When Minichamps announced they would make resin models alongside their diecast range, it was expected these resin ones would be more finely detailed in all areas. I'm thinking about cuts in the wings, floor or everywhere where there are any gills or fins or holes to cut out. Also better cockpit details like 3D belts with photo edge buckle parts, a nice looking figurine with a correct helmet, a real steering wheel and some additional extras like FIA decals on the cockpit sides or carbon fiber texturing. The first few models of their resin range did feature some or even most of these details. Gradually however the quality has slid to the level of the diecast models. This is somewhat still acceptable but when you take into consideration that the resin models are more expensive because they are supposedly are more detailed and then you'll have to come to the conclusion that they are not then you kind of feel a bit conned. None of the finer details I mentioned above are featured on this model and the most noticeable one is the lack of cuts in the wings. Now for the front wing I can kinda understand that strategy as it makes the whole structure more fragile but if you don't cut out the cascades then you can add the finer photo edge slot gap pieces like they used to do. These here don't look horrible but they just aren't refined enough for a model in this price range. The same goes for the rear wing. There is only one cut to be made so this could be easily done without compromising the structural integrity of the piece. Again it doesn't look terrible but yeah, not on the level you would or should expect from a Minichamps resin model. Same story goes for the lower rear wing beams, where the pieces are all fused together. The inner end plates then of the rear wing also lack some carbon texturing, and the wing planes themselves also don't feature the FIA mandated measurement dots on the flaps. The floor too is not as detailed as it should be, especially these big vertical elements of the uh, front floor edge let's say. These pieces are just smooth plastic and there's no carbon fiber texture on it like uh, in the rest of the floor. Another area where it's lacking is the cockpit I think. The figurine looks okay but the belts are no good. They're just cheap looking decals instead of a real fabric or even plastic belts with photo etched uh, buckle parts. The frustrating part is that Minichamps actually used these better belt details on their resin models before but I mean yeah. Not only that, but on this model even the simple branding of the belts, the Sabil branding, is missing on the figurine. The rest of the cockpit is also a bit bland, there's no real depth to it. The helmet visor too then is not very good. I'll admit it's at least a bit better than that outdated brown visor thing they kept using for all these years, but I think now they've tried too hard. 
it's a shame it doesn't have a nice gradient in it, but it's just like a full-on golden visor. And their efforts in either blue or purple look a lot better than this golden tint, actually. So yes, if you tell me this is supposed to be a high-quality model car, then I honestly don't see it. So that's not the best of stars for this model. Question is, are there still any good parts then? The simple answer is yes, but you kind of have to do something about it yourself. First I'll mention that the overlook of the model is actually quite good. The shape looks to be accurate and the dimensions and proportions look just right. The underside of the car then is also fascinating to see now, with these big turning vanes leading into these Venturi tunnels that channel air towards the big diffuser at the back. One thing that's pretty good on the model as well are all these rivets, all of the bodywork. The only thing is that originally they weren't colored in, so I did color them black. And this small detail makes the model look so much more realistic and breaks some of the plain whiteness on some areas. Because of these, I think the body panel lines also become more visible as well. The wheels of the car then are also pretty nice. These uh, tire sidewalls feature these textured lines to create a bit more depth on them. I added extra tire markings and a barcode decal myself for a more realistic look. The wheel discs then are also nicely done. And the wheel nuts are pretty good, although they forgot to add the colored ring on the cone and the small yellow dot on the tip. The rear wheels show a bit of the rim underneath the wheel cover, it seems, in white, which is pretty nice. The fin on the engine cover too is quite special on this car, with this uh, cutout portion. And underneath is actually a uh, small long vent. On the model the fin looks really nice in this uh, pretty thin material. The same fine level of detailing is also visible on the pita tube on the top of the tub and the small serrated window in front of the cockpit. The metallic strengthening rod connecting the floor ends to the chassis is a fine metal piece and not a plastic one like many champs has used before. The helmet shape on the figurine then is also very good. It's very clearly a Schubert helmet with that specific spoiler that Mick uses. For instance, this is very different than the Schubert Verstappen or Perez use. A visor tint was added onto the golden visor then to make it look a bit more realistic. I've uh, cut out a piece of uh, tint film in the shape of a tear off to diffuse the golden shine of the new uh, style visor Minichamps uses. Underneath the helmet, the missing belt branding has also been added. Around the cockpit, there are a lot of these fins, which give the model a rather special look. I also really like the mirror support pieces here on the side pod. The steering wheel too then is nice, not great but decent looking. The shape looks to be correct and the decals on them aren't too bad. Again here some extras were added. The steering column has been uh, colored silver with the quick release mechanism colored in yellow. The part where it connects to the bulkhead, I've applied a carbon decal to add to the realism. Finally then on the rear wing I've added some uh, extra details like the dots on the main planes and underneath on the upper flap and the beam wings. A row of silver dots were added to the back of the end plates as well to recreate the rear light LEDs on them. The end plates on the front wing then are pretty interesting actually. These three indents here give it a unique look I think. And this uh, flow conditioner on the outside looks simply great. So yeah, it sure has some pros this model, but almost all of the good parts I've encountered are things that were unfinished in my eyes and that I had to improve myself. With the addition of all these small details here and there, the model looks like it always should have looked coming out of Minichamp's factory. I'm in no way an expert modeler and all of these extra features that I've added are not very hard to do by yourself. But it's a shame they are quite necessary though to lift the model up to the level you would expect it to be. I'm sure Minichamps are capable of adding most of these refinements too, but it's clearly not a matter of if they can, but more if they want to. In its standard form I think it's a decent model car, but I couldn't recommend it for the price it's going for. To ask close to 200 euro for a pretty basic model is actually a bit absurd. If they would have cut the wings out and added those details that I had to add myself, I would say it's well worth it. 
Now it kind of looks like an unfinished model car. Mini champs are lucky that I like fiddling around on these uh, models, otherwise I think I would be disappointed with it. The way it looks now, I'm kind of happy with it though. I just have to see through some of the flaws that I can't uh, rectify myself like the cuts in the wings or the bad seatbelt details. And so now I would like to ask you what is your opinion on the uh, Mini Champs resin models? Are you also seeing the decline in quality? And how would you think this model here stacks up? Let me know in the comments down below. With that, I'd like to thank you a lot for watching yet another review video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did to help me out and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Check out the other content as well and come back soon for yet another video. In the meantime, take care and bye bye.